our universe is unimaginably huge. Living here on earth, we are only able to imagine distances in the order of kilometers. 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 100, 1000, 10,000 kilometers. But when it comes to space, the scale of distances is unfathomably large. And that's why we use light to measure distances in space. Light is incredibly fast. In fact, it travels 299-792-458 meters in a second. And in a year, light is able to cover approximately 9.6 trillion kilometers. Now, to put this into perspective, Moon, which took Apollo mission around 4 days to reach, is just 1 light second away from Earth. And our Sun is just 8 light minutes away from Earth. The star closest to our solar system, Proxima Centauri, is only 4.24 light years away. Our entire Milky Way is spread across 100,000 light years. And the galaxy closest to us, Andromeda, is just 2.5 million light years away. Space is incredibly huge and our tiny brains cannot fathom the scale of the distances in space. So now the question arises, how are we able to measure the distances to distant galaxies and stars in our universe? Well, for this we have developed a couple of different methods. The oldest and the easiest method is called as the parallax method. To understand this, close both your eyes and stretch out your arm like this. Now open up your thumb. Now open one of your eyes and look at your thumb. And now close this eye and open the other eye. When you observe the same thumb which is at the same distance from your body through two different eyes, then you can see that the apparent position of the thumb changes. Now we can use this change in apparent position and calculate the distance of the thumb from the body. This exact same method is used to measure distances of stars which are close to us. The problem with this method is that even if we put two telescopes on opposite ends of the earth, then also the distances in space are so big that we are not able to get enough angular resolution. However, to overcome this problem, we use the revolution of earth around the sun. We take two observations of the same celestial object six months apart. So for example, one set of observations of an object we make in Jan and the next set of observations we make in July. Now how does this help us? Well, in a period of 6 months, the position of Earth around the Sun changes quite a lot. And using this change in position, we can use parallax method to calculate the distance of celestial objects. However, using this method, also we can only calculate the distance of stars which are just 100 light years away from us. Using this parallax method, we cannot calculate the distances of stars or any other celestial objects which are more than 100 light years away from our Earth. To calculate the distances of stars and other celestial objects which are more than 100 light years away from us, we developed another method. We started using stars which are called as standard candles. Now what are standard candles? Standard candles are stars whose luminosity changes over a certain period of time. These are also called as C feed variables. In 1908, Henrietta Leavitt, who was working as a computer, which essentially means as a data analyst in Harvard, discovered a way through which we can measure the distances of objects which are much farther away than the Earth. While working in Harvard, she had access to data of around 2500 C feed variable stars. Henretta was trying to figure out a relationship between the period of these C feed variables and their absolute luminosity. By period, I mean the time period in which the brightness of the star reaches its maximum and then fades to its minimum. She was able to figure out the relationship between the period of these C feed variables and their absolute luminosity. 
she was able to figure out that if we take two different sea feed variable stars and the period of one star is one day and the period of second star is 10 day then the luminosity of the second star would be 10 times the luminosity of the first star this equation helps us understand the relative luminosity of different sea feed variables however we need the absolute luminosity of these sea feed variables to be able to calculate the distance to these sea feed variables we can use the relationship between absolute luminosity of a star and its apparent brightness on earth to figure out its distance from the earth so to be able to use the sea feed variables to calculate the distances in space we needed the absolute brightness of these sea feed variables to do so scientists started observing the sea feed variables which are less than 100 light years away from our earth Using the data of sea feed variable stars which are less than 100 light years away from Earth, scientists were able to conclude that the absolute luminosity of a sea feed variable star whose period is 3.7 days is minus 3.1. Now using this value, we can figure out the absolute luminosity of any sea feed variable star in our universe. So for example, if we have a sea feed variable star whose period is 10 days, then its absolute luminosity would be 10 into minus 3.1 divided by 3.7. Now, since we know what is the absolute luminosity of any sea feed variable star, if we are trying to figure out the distance to any celestial object, we can observe a sea feed variable star which is close to that object. So, for example, we are trying to figure out the distance of a galaxy from our Earth. And we take observation of a sea feed variable star in that galaxy. Or we can take observations of multiple sea feed variable stars in that galaxy. Using the relationship between the absolute brightness or luminosity of sea feed variable star and their apparent brightness on Earth, we can figure out the distance to that sea feed variable star and hence figure out the distance to that galaxy. This was a giant leap in our ability to figure out distances in universe. Using this method, we can figure out the distances of celestial objects up to 2 million light years from Earth. And even beyond this distance, we can calculate the distance to distant galaxies and stars by using other standard candles such as type 1 supernova explosion. Type 1 supernova explosion happens when a massive star dies. And these supernova explosions can in fact at times dwarf the brightness of entire galaxies. The brighter the supernova, more time it takes for its light to fade away. And using this relationship, we can figure out the distance to any exploding star. And using these supernovae, we can figure out distances to galaxies and other stars. All these methods have helped us to calculate the distances to distant galaxies and stars in our universe. And these calculations help us to understand the universe much better. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and stay curious.